you guys harassed me enough to do another cooking show. So here we are tonight. Todd brought home some hogfish. So I'm gonna do a recipe that I've not tried before. It is potato crusted fried fish. And we're just gonna see how it turns out. I don't know what it's gonna taste like, but I've wanted to try it for a long time. So we're gonna give it a try. The first thing that we're gonna do right now is go ahead and make up um, the cocktail sauce. Sorry, the tartar sauce. That way it can sit in the fridge while we get everything else ready. So we're just gonna get started on that right now. Um, I like to use a tangy tartar sauce because I don't really like a lot of sweet things. So we're just gonna start with like a half a cup of mayonnaise. And you guys all know I don't really measure that well. I can measure, I just choose not to. <laughs> so we've got the mayonnaise in. I'm just making enough basically for us for dinner. You can always make more, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna throw in some dill relish. Not sweet relish, dill relish. Just a good tablespoon or so. Just eyeball it, put in how much you like. I think the actual recipe calls for a tablespoon, I'm not sure. I'm gonna chop up some onion. I have a half an onion here, so I'm just gonna cut up a little bit of it. I don't know if you guys know, but there's no reason, when I slice an onion, I only slice, I only dice it this way, straight down here where it's sliced. I'll show you in one second. Oops, one more. And then I only go here. I don't slice it again this way because the onion's already got the slices in it, so it already makes little pieces for you. And you can just make it as thin as you like. That's probably a lot more than I even need. Then you can just run your knife right back through it the other way. Then I'm gonna use my knife to help pick up these little pieces of onion, like that. That's enough, we'll have to put those away in a minute. I got overzealous with the onion. Now we're gonna add in some capers. I don't know if you guys use capers too much, but I love capers. And I'm just gonna put them on the cutting board. The hardest part about capers is getting them out of the jar. I just want you to know that. They put them in the world's skinniest jars, put them in a little pile, and I'm just gonna go through them. And then the last thing is I want a little lemon juice. Um, I need some lemon slices for the fish anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it into slices and then just squeeze a couple slices into the, I'm sorry, wedges into the tartar sauce. So I'm just gonna take like two of these wedges and squeeze them into the tartar sauce. And I'll save the rest for the fish. Now the fun part is trying to stir this. It's a little, um, I don't know, thin, runny, juicy, whatever you want to call it right at the moment. But as it sits in the refrigerator and the flavors all combine and, and meld together, it'll thicken up a lot for you. It won't be this runny. It only needs to sit in there maybe an hour and it'll be good to go. I put the lid on it, pop it in the fridge, and then we'll get the fish going. We'll see you back here shortly. We're gonna have asparagus with our fish tonight. And this is how I like to keep my asparagus. I buy it in the stand-up stocks and I put it in a bowl with a little water in the bottom and I cover it with the bag and I set it in the refrigerator. It will last probably a week, week and a half, sometimes two weeks, that's pushing it before it starts to get all wilty. If you make sure it stays, keeps water in the bottom of it, it doesn't soak up all the water, it'll stay fresher longer. But it's just so much fresher than the stuff that's in the cellophane package. You know, it's just, that's just the way I prefer to, to buy it. You guys can do what you want, but if you wanna keep it fresh, this is how you do it. So I'm gonna go wash this and then I'm gonna come back over here and chop it up. I'll be right back. So I've just dried this off a little bit with some paper towels after washing it, you know, under the water. And the way that I cut the asparagus is I take a piece of it, that mostly with a white end, and I break it. And wherever it breaks, 
that's going to be my measuring tool for the rest of the asparagus and I'm going to cut them because I don't want to sit here and break all these one by one. Line them all up. They're about that long. See here, take my knife, whack a doodle, just like that. And then I'm just going to spread them out on the, on the tray. Then I'm going to go back and get the second batch. I still don't know where that cut one is. It's in there somewhere. Or the broken one. I'm going to break this one and use it as a measurement tool for these. And then you just cut. Now these I'm going to lay the opposite way. Get rid of all that. Spread them around. I'm even going to do a little here and a little here. The thinner the layer, the quicker they cook. Right? I mean, that way we can get some even cooking time. It's not going to take very long. About the same amount of time as it takes to cook the fish, it'll take to cook the asparagus. Maybe should have got a bigger pan, but that's okay. So seasoning is going to be pretty simple. And I'm going to sprinkle on some olive oil, just like so. And then I have this new salt. How do you say that, Todd? Is it Osmo? Os Osmo. 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 This is roasted garlic sea salt. Um, there's a YouTuber that Todd watches that's a chef. He's very young and he's very good. Todd will have to tell you who he is. And he came out with his own line of salts. And I'm a salt fanatic, if you can't tell from back here, my salt collection. No? You can't see it? Todd will zoom in on it later. And then... Um, uh, that's all I'm going to put on here. I was going to put salt and, and garlic powder. Now I'm just going to put the roasted garlic salt and alleviate a couple steps. I'm just going to take some sprinkles. It's very coarse. It's kind of mild. It's not, it's not overly powering and salt or garlic. I, I really like it. One more little dash. And then all I'm going to do is just put my hand in here and mix them around. Get them all mixed together. They're going to go at 400 degrees, and I'm going to cook them probably about 12 to 15 minutes until they get all nice and roasted and tender. Okay, so I have my three trays here. You saw me put the flour in. This one is just plain flour. I beat an egg into here. This is some of the mashed potato flakes that you saw me put in. I'm just gonna add a little seasoning to this. I want, I have uh, this flaky white salt here. Sea salt that we got from, how do you say that again, Tom? Nick Giovanni. Yeah, sure. Osmo? Uh, oh yeah, Osmo. I'm just gonna put a few little flicks in here. I don't want a ton. I'm gonna put a little over here on this side too. This is the flaky white salt. Not a, not a, a ton, because I'm going to put some garlic salt in here as well. Then we're going to do a little onion powder here, some black pepper, oof, that's thick, just a smidge, and just a little bit of parsley flakes, excuse my generic brand of parsley, but hey, it still tastes the same. Now we have the batter station all ready for the fish. We're going to do flour egg, and then the potatoes. Now let's get ready and we're going to go ahead and batter the fish. We're going to start with the flour, then we're going to do the egg, and then we're going to put it into the potato flake mixture at the end. So I'm going to use this cast iron skillet to cook the fish and I'm going to use good old bacon fat. So I'm going to add a little butter once the bacon fat gets hot. Bacon fat is starting to smoke. I'm going to turn it down just a smidge. We don't want to fire. I'm going to add a little butter because there's nothing better than butter and bacon fat. And as you see when it's foaming, that's the time to put the fish in. Foaming means add the fish. So here we go. They're all battered. Excuse my nappy pan. I'm just going to take them and remember the trick to put it away from you. Turn that back up just a smidge. 
Todd, by the way, loves that word smidge, so I use it as often as I can. I was thinking. Because he hates it. This one I'm going to do this way because, sorry, my OCD is set in and they have to go into the pan evenly. As you see, thick, thin, thick, thin, I don't know. Okay, we're going to give these a few minutes and we're going to come back and check them. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I don't know if it's good, bad, or indifferent. We'll find out. I know this is going to sound crazy, but as I told Todd, I'm going to have to flip them because I can smell it. That's sad. I'm going to tilt the, the oil this way. As you can see, the fish moved, so they've already released themselves. You don't ever want to force the fish to, remove, to move. See how they all move? See how they move when I touch them? That means they're ready to flip. If they're still stuck to the pan, leave them. This is a right-handed flipper, and I'm a left-handed girl, so let's see if we can do this right. Or left. I, I, this is the first time I'm ever using a fish spatula. You see how it's curved right-handed? They should make one curved the other way for left-handed people. Can somebody make me one, please? Thank you. This piece of fish is burning, by the way. Hopefully they look as good as, taste as good as they look. Yeah. Okay, they, they smell done to me, if anybody knows what that means. I mean, just look at this. When I flip it, look at that. Yeah, they're done. They're not very thick, so they don't need to cook a long time. It only took about five or six minutes and that piece broke, so I can see that it's done inside. Perfect. Let's see if I can take these other ones out without breaking them. Alright folks, well, as you saw, my wife did a hogfish cooking segment and this looks absolutely delicious. It's something that she's never tried before so I'm anxious to try it. Hogfish, you really can't mess up too bad but I'm going to tell you right now that it's flaky, it's white. She used those uh, potato crusted hogfish is what it's called I guess. So let's try it. It almost makes me want to go offshore fishing every single week just to catch these fish because they are so delicious. If you've never had hogfish, if you have the capabilities to go on offshore, please do it because we were only less than five miles offshore and we caught these fish. So you can do it on good days. But anyway, great fish. My wife just asked me off camera if I like the recipe. And yes, I love the recipe. I just said it's absolutely awesome. It's unbelievable. We will have the recipe listed. The ingredients were shown during the show, but the, the recipe will be in the description down below. I just want to thank my wife for doing this. We haven't done it in a very long time, and there's a couple of reasons why. One of the main reasons is I'll let her tell you at the end of the show why we haven't done it in a while but thank you again for watching i'm going to let her finish out this show i just want to thank all of you guys for actually watching the video i know it's been a minute since i've done a cooking segment part of the issue was todd and i we have rented this house for three years and in um, june of this year we decided to buy the house and after buying the house i decided to just redo the kitchen because i there was parts of it that I couldn't stand. It's a nice, big, open space kitchen, but it was very dated and the countertops drove me crazy. So we decided to go in and do, you know, new countertops. I painted the cabinets. Todd will show you some pictures later. Uh, we had Shannon, his friend Shannon Wise, come in and help us with some of the construction issues. Turned out perfectly. I absolutely love it. And I have to thank you guys because it's part of, because you guys watch his show, which helps him, you know, make money. Let's just be honest. It helped pay for part of the kitchen. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. 
and I hope to have a lot more episodes for you. This is a recipe I've wanted to try for a long time. I've heard of people doing potato crusted fish and I've never done it myself. And this turned out really amazing. So we're gonna put this recipe below. I want you guys to try it out. I didn't make the recipe, I, I got it online, but just tell me what you think about it and you know, let me know what else you wanna see. I'm here. We're gonna do some more, a lot more recipes are not always gonna be fishing or fish related. They're gonna be other foods, just so you can see it too. But thanks so much for coming into our new kitchen tonight and sharing this time with us. And we'll see you guys again. What do you say? See you on the flip side. There you go. I got it. <laughs>